United States Tobacco Company, makers of Old Briar Pipe Tobacco, Model Pipe Tobacco, Encore Cigarettes, Sano Cigarettes and Sano Cigars present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring Lee Tracy. It's my very pleasant duty to bid you welcome on behalf of Radio Bermuda and of all the friendly people in our beautiful island. Thank you. I know you're going to have a wonderful two weeks at the Royal Oleander. It's one of our very best hotels. You probably have one of those marvelous private bungalows, you know. Oh, by the way, is this your first visit to Bermuda? Oh, no, I was here last May. Good, then I shan't have to tell you about the many wonderful things you're going to enjoy. Perhaps you'll be good enough to tell us something about how you became the Cosmo Beauty Queen. Oh, well, there really isn't much to it. You see, the Cosmo Cosmetic Corporation decided that this would be their coronation year, too. So they had a contest, and I was chosen queen, and we're going to go be all over the United States, and we'll have a Cosmo Coronation Ball every place. And, well, I think there's going to be one here at the hotel this Saturday night. Oh, that's right. And incidentally, Miss Dixon, mm -hmm. what's all this I hear about a $100,000 crown that you're supposed to wear? Oh, that's the Cosmo crown. It's really beautiful. It's just full of diamonds and rubies and things. But is it really worth all that money? Oh, it certainly is. Well, they even sent a detective along to take charge of it. A detective? Uh -huh. By Jove, you know, I don't think I care very much for his job. No. Say, Marty, how about this, huh? Three <laughs> days ago, I'm sitting in New York minding my own business. You get this assignment, and here I am in Bermuda. Well, why not, Lieutenant? You needed a vacation, I needed company. Yeah, but don't forget what I said in New York st still goes. For you, this trip may be strictly for business, but for me, it's strictly for fishing. Oh, uh, which reminds me. How am I supposed to get any rest sleeping in that room with that uh, diamond uh, crown you've got there? Don't worry, pal. The Cosmo crown goes straight into the hotel safe. Now, how long do you think it's going to be before we get through customs? Over? Well, I hear it moves pretty fast once they get the baggage unloaded. Hey, Marty. Yeah. Are you getting paid to watch that crown and Miss Dixon? No, no, just the, just the crown. Why? Well, of the two, it seems to me you've been watching Miss Dixon more closely. <laughs> Frankly, Lieutenant, if, uh, if this thing were built like Miss Dixon, it would stand uh, an even chance. <laughs> Uh-oh. He's still at it. Uh, him again. Mm -hmm. Hey, he hasn't let that poor girl alone during the whole trip. Uh, what's his name, anyway? Peter Farnham. But judging by the way he was acting on board ship, I'd say he'd like to be known as a sea wolf. Uh, know anything about him? What's he do? Oh, uh, he's... He's rich. And he's boring. And he's a pain in the neck. Sheila, darling, you were simply magnificent on the broadcast. I heard every word in my portable over at the baggage counter. It makes me nervous. Now, I've got to be going. But, darling, there's no hurry. They haven't unloaded the baggage yet. And I do have something very important to ask you. Will you have dinner with me tonight? No, Peter, I won't. And don't bother to ask me tomorrow night because I won't have dinner with you tomorrow night or any other night. Now, will you please stop, What, Peter? darling, you said... Maybe somebody bothering you? Well, Mickey hmm. Siler, what are you doing here? Well, I read in the papers you were arriving. Is this bird bothering you? I'll call you at the hotel, darling. Darling? What's he all about? Oh, he's just up. You know how some men act on boats? Yeah, I met you on a boat, remember? <laughs> About a year ago. Goodness, it's a long time, isn't a it? A real long time, and twice as long without you. You shouldn't run out on a guy like the way you did. It makes a fellow nervous. I wonder how long I have to stay waiting around. Oh, not long. But you really come back in style, a queen. Is your highness going to have any time for a bartender? Oh, 
Mickey, I don't think so. You know, this kind of thing takes, well, all one's time. To be truthful, I don't think I'll be able to see you. Oh. Well, that's it, I guess. In case you decide you want to, uh, you won't have to look very far. Lieutenant any bar at a new place, the Royal Oleander, the hotel where you're staying. Customs is ready if you're in a hurry to go. Oh, yes, thanks. Oh, Mickey, I'm sorry. Where you're going, you're going to have plenty to be sorry about. Bermuda is an island 17 miles long, sitting out in the middle of the Atlantic, looking like a beautiful sunset lying down for a rest. Maybe that's why the natives refer to it as Alcatraz in color. But to tourists like me, it looks like heaven on earth. Boy, what a beauty, huh? Eh? Yeah, she's not all right. But after what happened down at the dock, I'd say that that beauty of hers is going to get her in trouble someday. She's the kind of a doll that the guys go daffy over. Yeah, and you know something? I'm beginning to think that you're one of them. Hmm? Marty, I wasn't talking about her. I was talking about this, this fishing rod. Oh. I'll get it. Hello, Miss Mills. May I come in? Yes, yeah, sure, of course. Oh, uh, Miss Mills, uh, this is uh, Lieutenant Gray, New York Police Department. Hello. Miss Mills is connected with the Coronation Company. She's down here to do a little uh, head work and go ahead and promote the uh, Coronation. How's things going? Oh, as far as my work's concerned, everything is just fine. But there's something I wanted to talk to you about. Something rather personal. Oh, uh, Marty, if uh, you two will excuse me, I think I'd better go arrange about that fishing boat. <laughs> See you again, Miss Mills. It should take me at least an hour. <laughs> Someday that guy is going to break a leg jumping at conclusions. Okay, Miss Mills. What is the trouble? The trouble is I've been away from home for a week. Oh, don't tell me that you went off and left the electric iron turned on. This isn't funny, Mr. Kane. While I've been away, our little queen, Miss Dixon, has been seeing my husband. I got a call from a friend in New York this morning. Mmm, that's not so good. Oh, are you sure it wasn't just malicious gossip? I'm sure. Steve has been acting differently ever since I introduced him to that... Oh, that... Take it easy now. I can't take it easy. I love my husband, and I'm not going to stand idly by and watch that little monster take him away from me. No, you shouldn't. I also don't want to lose my job, and that's what I'm afraid I will do if I start in on her. <laughs> I can just see the headlines. Cosmo Promotion Director scratches Beauty Queen's eyes out. <laughs> you shouldn't do that, either. Exactly. I happen to like my 15000 a year, and that's why I've come to you. I want you to tell her to lay off, to cut it out, or so help me, I'll kill her. Now, 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 this sounds more like a job for Dorothy Dix on a detective. I think you're wrong. I think that a few threats of what will happen to that precious career of hers will scare the life out of her. Tell her there'll be a scandal. Our queen likes that new throne of hers. And remember, it wasn't so long ago that she was spending most of her time sitting on bar stools. Maybe you're right. Well, whether I'm right or not, you'll get paid for your trouble. Well, with me, Miss Mills, getting paid takes it out of the trouble class. Good. Now, where do you suppose I'll find her, Royal Highness? I suppose you could find her hanging around the neck of the nearest available man. <laughs> well, I'll have to make myself available. It's a small island. I'll find her. Sheila Dixon not only moved fast, she moved often. It was almost midnight when I caught up with her. I found her sitting on a bar stool. And our queen was not wearing her crown, but she was trying a nightcap. She listened to what I had to say, and then I listened to what she had to say. It's all very touching, Mr. Kane. But I'm just beginning to find out something about life. You just get what you go after. If somebody happens to be in the way, it's just too bad for them. Well, I'm not scared of any kind of publicity. I love it. It's for that Mills dame, you can tell her she can have her husband back when I'm good and through with him. As for you, dear Tracy, I'm through with you right now. So run along, little boy, and play with your little tin badge. I suppose you've been listening. Doesn't matter. You look awfully cute. So 
always did look cute. All you needed was a little more class. Oh, thanks. Time you get through work. By now? Where are you living these days? Oh, I got a little house down the road. What's the address? The Bermuda houses don't have addresses. They just have names. All right. What's the name? Lovebird Cottage. Why? <laughs> oh, no. Lovebird Cottage. Well, I'll tell you something, Nikki. When you get through work, you go straight home to your little lovebird cottage and maybe you'll find a big surprise waiting for you. Well, I, I've been calling you for the last hour, Miss Mills. I wanted to tell you that I finally located our little friend. Huh? Yeah. Oh, yes. I had plenty of luck. All of it bad. Mm-hmm. Yep, she gave it to me in clubs, diamonds, hearts, and spades. In fact, she threw the whole deck at me. I'm sorry. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. We'll find a way. Don't you worry. You just try and get some sleep. Because I don't think there's any doubt that anything will interrupt the sleep of our little beauty in Bungalow 10. <laughs> Tishner, can I help you? Indeed you can, Hap. I want a carton of Sano cigarettes. Right you are. Sano cigarettes, really great cigarettes with really less nicotine. They are great cigarettes, Hap, and not just because they contain less nicotine. What do you mean, Mrs. Tishner? Well, you remember the day you sold me my first pack of Sano cigarettes. I certainly do. I remember that you were worried about smoking too much. <laughs> yes, and you pointed out that it was the nicotine and not my smoking that was worrying me. Well, that's true. And then you explained that Nicotine is removed from Sano cigarettes even before they are made. Taken right out of the tobacco so that there's less than 1% left in. Mrs. <laughs> Tishner, would you like a job behind the counter here? <laughs> well, it is an impressive story, Half. Naturally, if there's less nicotine left in the tobacco, there's bound to be less in the smoke. That's right, Mrs. Tishner. Less than one-tenth of 1% 1 nicotine in the smoke by actual scientific measurement. Less than any leading cigarette. Of course. But with all that nicotine taken out of the tobacco, the big surprise is the taste. You know, I think you should tell people beforehand just how wonderful Sano cigarettes really taste. Oh, I've smoked a lot of different brands in my time. But Sano cigarettes beat them all. And you may quote me. Thank you very much. I will. <coughs> there you are. Thank you very much. Come in again. Thank you. Bye Hi. now. Hi, Happy. Top of the morning. Well, thank you, Sergeant. The same to you. What are you hitting the Rover boys? Oh, not a word. But I don't uh, have to know what they're doing. Let's see, 10 o'clock? By this time, they've probably been out fishing for an hour. Ah, some folks are most fortunate. Oh, cheer up, Hap. Maybe they'll bring you back something from Bermuda. Yeah, if they do, it'll probably be an onion. How are things at headquarters? Oh, pretty quiet, I'm happy to say. Well, that's good. You know, when business is bad for the police, things are good for the city. I better get along and see if they stay that way. So long, Hap. Bye. Hi there, Hap. Hi, Charlie. Well, what's new? Well, Charlie, for a pipe smoker like yourself, nothing could be newer or better than this. Model pipe tobacco, the larger, improved new pouch. Oh, my old favorite model in a brand new pouch, eh? Yes, sir, and contains 50% more tobacco for just 15 cents. Happier now, 15 cents richer. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs> It was one of our most reliable maids, Olga, who discovered the body. The poor girl is still in hysterics. Oh, I, I do wish the police would get here. Mr. Kane, 
What on earth do you suppose I can do in the meantime? Don't do anything. Just try not to faint. Hey, Marty, it's a good thing I heard your voice. I've been looking for you everywhere. I did what you told me. I ordered your breakfast. It's on the table. Come on, your ham and eggs are getting cold. Now, wait a minute. Huh? Not half as cold as uh, our little friend in there. What? Hey. What happened? Drowned. I guess our little queen got herself in her cups last night. Wanted to take a bath, slipped, and took the big swim. Yeah, but her head's not underwater. Well, it's a short tub. Her feet are braced against the bottom. Rigor mortis set in and raised her head above the water. Mm, that's true. It's happened many times before. Mm. Oh, uh, have the uh, police been notified? Yeah, well, Mr. Anderson, the hotel manager here. He called them, then he called me. Well, it sure is too bad, but I'm still going fishing. You're coming, aren't you? No, no, no. I don't... I think I'll stick around. What for? The Bermuda police can handle an accidental death without you? Well, you know me. Besides... Huh? Come here. Take a look at this. Found this note lying on the floor. Hmm. Dearest Sheila, I will be waiting outside your bungalow at midnight. I must talk to you. I am desperate. Desperately in love. Peter. Peter? Farnham, I imagine. You remember, the sea wolf? Oh, yes, of course. Hey, Marty, maybe there is something in this, huh? But I'm still on a vacation, and I only get one a year. Well, far be it from me, pal, to spoil your vacation. You go fishing, and I'll stick around and see if anything fishy turns up on this end. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, what are you going to use for bait? Well, with this note, Maybe I can bait the local police into a fast autopsy. Nothing here to indicate it is not accidental death, Mr. Kane. Large amount of whiskey in the stomach, large amount of H2O in the lungs. And there's one bruise on the back of the head, but that was probably caused when the young lady slipped. Now, you uh, care to look it over? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, say, whoever drew this up is really thorough. Not only got the obvious things in, but chemical analyses as well. He's to be congratulated. Oh, there's nothing halfway about the Colonel. He studied under Sir Bernard Spilsbury in London, you know. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> He's the one who set that new standard for criminal pathologists, isn't he? Huh? Say, do you suppose I could have a copy of this? Well, I don't see why not. All right. I'll wait, if I may. Then back to the hotel in a nice, quick, cool shower. It's been a long, hot day. Oh, it has that. But, uh, you be careful. Accidents will happen in bathtubs, you know. Bermuda police? Yeah, well, put me through to Lieutenant Gaines. Will you please? Right. Hello, Lieutenant. It's Martin Kane. Say, I, uh, I wouldn't have that guard removed from front of bungalow number 10 if I were you. I've got definite proof that Miss Dixon was murdered. All right, all right. I did write that note. And I did see Sheila last night, and we did have a quarrel. I tried to kiss her, and she scratched me. But that's all there was to it. I was only with her for five minutes. And then I went directly home to wait for a telephone call I was expecting from New York. I see. Now, have you got anything else you want to tell me? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. You are wasting your time when you might be spending it to better advantage elsewhere. Well, and exactly where might that be? The bartender down at the hotel, the one that called Mickey. He's more the type who would do a thing like that. Why don't you ask him where he was last night after midnight? That's a... Uh... That's a wonderful idea. I thought it was when I first had it. No, no. I didn't see her at all after she left here last night. I went straight home, straight to bed. Now look, mister, 10 minutes of talking to you is long enough. The only thing you're going to get out of me now is a drink, if you can pay for it. <clears throat> hey there, Lieutenant Gaines here. Oh, hello, Kane, I'm glad you called. No, nothing definite with us. 
Well, I'm just sitting here changing my report to accidental death, from accidental death to death by violence. And then I expect a few more angles I want to tackle. Oh, by the way, we question that Lewis and Mills girl. Yes, you can have very much to offer other than a suggestion that we question you. Yes, she said you had a bit of an argument with Miss Dixon yourself last night. Oh, oh you did? Well, well, I, I don't blame you. Yes. Oh, yes, it's a very good thing you told us about it yourself. But if you meet the young lady, don't go popping her into a bathtub. We've got enough on our hands right now. All right. Goodbye. Of course I told them you had an argument with her. What did you expect me to do? One doesn't lie to the police. One tries to help the police. After all, if this is a murder, which I doubt, Mr. Kane, I'm the last person in the world who has anything to hide. Well, it is murder. And I guess I'm just naive enough to somehow get the idea that you do have a motive. Well, if you do have that idea, you're very wrong. I suppose you told the police where you were when I was trying to get you on the telephone after midnight last night. I told them I took a bicycle and rode out to one of the beaches. I sat looking at the ocean and thinking. I saw that dress you had on last night. Bad for riding bicycles. I changed my dress. Sure you don't want to change your story? Well, sure, Marty. It is one of the most thorough autopsy reports I've ever seen, but uh, I still don't see from this how you knew it was murder. Well, look again. What did they find in the lungs? Well, what would you expect? Uh, H2O, water. Lieutenant, in a bathtub in most Bermuda hotels, including this one, you'd expect to find something else. What, fish? I certainly couldn't find any in the ocean all day. No, not fish. You see, on the island of Bermuda, they depend solely upon the rain for their fresh water supply. They catch it on those white roofs with those little steps in it, and they store it in tanks. That's where all private homes get their entire fresh water supply. But the hotels, they can't store enough to take care of the drinking water and the baths and the showers and so forth. So they dig wells. And the well water has a considerable amount of salt in it. Oh, I see. So the lack of salt in the girl's lungs showed that she was drowned in fresh water. And was not drowned in that hotel bathtub. Ah, uh, the chances are she was drowned in a tub in some private home. As for who did it, well, I just figured that the guy who told me the biggest lie, he'll be over here in a few minutes. I telephoned him and asked him to drop around. Would you like to know who I think did it? Are you kidding? Of course I'd like to know. All right. I think it was the light out. Buddy, are you all right? Outside of being half scared to death, I'm all right. Hey, is there another light around here somewhere? Yeah, I'll huh? get it. That was a Lieutenant Gaines' voice I heard out there. Chaps all right in here? Yeah, we're okay, thanks. Oh, we were having another look inside Bungalow 10. We're passing here, and we saw someone come dashing out of the oleander bushes by your window. So we took after the intruder. The by... intruder get away? Well, heavens no. We can't have people running around the island taking pot shots at the tourists. Sergeant. Bring him in here, please. Lieutenant, I believe you are about to meet the murderer. In homes that boast a masterpiece of painting or of the furniture designer's art, you likely find encore cigarettes. One instance is the home of Mrs. Livingston Biddle II, a prominent New York socialite. Before choosing Encore as her filter cigarette, Mrs. Biddle tried the others and found that Encore is the one filter cigarette with a flavor you can really taste. Responsible for this unique satisfaction is Encore's own open-end filter mouthpiece. Although it provides complete filter protection, you taste what you're smoking because it's so easy to draw on. And this mouthpiece can't obstruct your enjoyment of the full, rich flavor of Encore's truly superb tobaccos. And with the filter recessed deep within the Encore mouthpiece, 
you are assured of a much cleaner, neater smoke. Once you try a pack or two of Encore, you'll agree, Encore is truly the one filter cigarette that filters the smoke, but not the taste. Your attack on Mr. Kane does two things, you know. It makes you guilty of attempted murder, and it establishes you definitely as the type capable of having killed that girl. I have yet to meet a murder suspect who didn't have a story. You care to tell yours? I got a story, but who's gonna believe it? Well, they can't hang you for trying, and maybe they can if you don't. All right, last night was an accident. Sheila was drinking, she said she might be waiting for me at my house. Yeah, she was waiting all right, dead in my bathtub. And she must have tried to sober up, decided to take a bath, fell and hit her head, and that was it. Well, why did you move the body? Well, I got panicky, who wouldn't? I rolled her up in a blanket, threw in my car, and brought her back to her own bungalow. And I filled up the tub with water and rolled her in. I figured that that was it as far as I was concerned. Too bad you did it, Mickey. I didn't do Whoa. it! Oh! Oh, I mean, it's too bad you decided to throw that knife at me. Yeah. You know, Lieutenant, this isn't the one that I said that you might meet the murderer. This isn't the party that I called to come over here. But maybe that is. Come in! What is this? Well, I'm glad you made it before I got through. Lieutenant Gaines, I think you better stand by the door. This gentleman might suddenly find the need of some fresh air. I demand to know what this is all about. It's about the end of the line for you, my friend. That is, if the local police take my advice, they'll arrest you for the murder of Sheila Dixon. How dare you say such a thing? I dare because I am firmly convinced that after Sheila gave you the brush off last night, you followed her to Mickey's house. There you slugged her, dumped her in the bathtub, and drowned her. And in that way, you got even with her, and you hoped that you'd also get rid of her boyfriend here. I did no such thing. Oh, yes, that's right. You did tell me that... When you left the young lady after midnight last night, you went directly to your home and waited for a telephone call from the United States. I most certainly did. Well, did the call come through? Why, of course it came through. Yes, it did. It did. Well, we could check with the telephone company. Except that in Bermuda, the overseas telephone service shuts down after 10 o'clock. Well, that was easy. <laughs> well, maybe for you, Marty. But it was a slick piece of work just the same. No, like I said, it was easy. But how would you like to try to solve some of the mysteries that the... The big committee will run up against when they meet right here in Bermuda. Fred Utell speaking, reminding you to tune in Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring Lee Tracy at the same time next week, presented by the makers of Encore Cigarettes and Sano Cigarettes. Martin Kane, Private Eye has been selected to be shown to our armed forces overseas.